Hey everyone, this is Chundo. A frequent topic of discussion in Hearthstone circles is what the worst expansion of all time is. Well, instead of answering that question, I wanted to answer a different one. If you combine all the worst parts of all the expansions together, what would that set of cards look like? Well, about 10 days ago, I started posting online with this idea for each of the individual classes, and I received a lot more interest than I was expecting, and sometimes the exact amount of interest I was expecting. Well, I've now reached the last part of that journey, and I wanted to do something special for it, so I've made this video to show my choices that I made with a little help from Reddit. So here are the neutrals for the worst Hearthstone expansion of all time. First, some ground rules. Neutrals have 20 commons, 5 rares, 5 epics, and 5 legendaries. Now some guidelines. Try to mix up the mana cost. Try to mix up errors a little bit. And cards that were once good but then got nerfed to be bad are not eligible for this list. Also, no classic or basic cards, because that'd be too easy. With that out of the way, Gurubashi Chicken is a 1 mana 1 1 beast with overkill gain 5 attack. Overkill is a keyword that triggers when the card kills a minion by more than its remaining health, essentially over killing it. In general, it was a very difficult condition to trigger, and triggering it on a 1 1 without rush is nigh impossible. And then once you trigger it, you only get 5 attack, a buff worth maybe 1.5 mana. On top of this, if the chicken dies when overkilling, the buff doesn't matter. Spell Shifter is a 1 mana 1 4 minion with spell damage plus 1, and each turn it's in your hand, it swaps its attack and health. Part of a series of pretty flavorful Worgen cards that would swap their attack and health in your hand released in Witchwood, these cards were largely misses from a competitive standpoint. Spell damage is usually only good in large amounts or on a card with another good effect like Blood Mage Thalnos. The main issue is that the stat switch is a major downside for this card since 4-1 is such a bad stat line. Speaking of spell damage, Spell Zerker is a 2 mana 2-3 two, that has plus 2 spell damage while damaged. A river crocolisk with 2 spell damage wouldn't be that bad, but the hoops you have to jump through for this card are a little ridiculous. Sure, you could hero power this as a mage, but then it becomes a 4 mana 2-2 two, two with spell damage, which is much less appealing. Now, I could have filled this set with a ton of minions with no text, but I don't think that that would be very interesting. But I don't want to exclude them completely, so filling in for the no text minions is Amgam Rager is a 3 mana 1 5. Could have been Faceless Behemoth, could have been Pit Fighter, but this is the vanilla I'm choosing to represent the blanks. With that out of the way, Vrigul, Vrigul, very ghoul is a 3 mana 3 1 with death rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, summon a 2 2 ghoul. The 3 mana 3 1 stat line is pretty tough with druid, rogue, mage, demon hunter, and sort of paladin being able to deal with it with just their hero power. Hearthstone is at the point where we have, albeit class only, 1 mana 3 1s with upside, and this card probably wouldn't see play if it's summoned a 2 2 on your turn too. Just compare this card to Devouring Ectoplasm. Yikes. Speaking of 3 mana 3 1s with bad death rattles, Backstreet Leper is a 3 mana 3 1 with death rattle, deal 2 damage to the enemy hero. This is slightly, ever so slightly, more reasonable in the context of Leper Gnome having to be nerfed from 2 attack to 1, but even then, you are paying 2 mana for an extra 2 attack and no upgrade to the death rattle. It's bad. On the opposite side of 3 drops and gadgets and we have Street Trickster is a 3 mana 0 7 demon with spell damage plus 1. This card is gonna go crazy in my spell damage lady in white priest deck. Zero attack is often a death sentence in Hearthstone since your opponent's minions can trade into your minion with no harm. As already mentioned, spell damage is good if it comes incidentally, can be played efficiently, or if it becomes in a big chunk for an OTK. This card is none of those things and provides no offensive pressure. Dragonhawk Rider is a 3 mana 3 3 minion with Inspire gain Wind Fury this turn. Inspire is a keyword that triggers whenever you activate your hero power. In a way, it sort of adds an effect sort of like in Magic the Gathering, where minions can have effects for a mana cost that you can choose to pay to activate. In this case, the mana cost for all these abilities would, is whatever the cost of your hero power is, usually 2 mana. Wind Fury is a keyword that has generally been overcosted, and this is no exception. This card probably wouldn't be that good if it was just a 3-3 with Wind Fury, but having to pay the cost of your hero power to give this low health minion temporary Wind Fury is not a recipe for success. If you want Wind Fury so badly, just play Young Dragonhawk. I'm kidding, don't play that card. Toothy Chest is a 3 mana 0-4 minion with the effect, at the start of your turn, set this minion's attack to 4. 
As already mentioned, zero attack minions are generally terrible unless they have some type of great effect like Doomsayer. This card has to survive until your opponent's turn in order to get plus one attack on a vanilla three mana minion. This card would be bad if it was just a 4-4. Four four. Wicked Skeleton is a 4 mana 1-1 one one with Battle Cry gain plus 1 plus 1 for every minion that die this turn. As we've learned with Infuse, getting minions to die can actually be fairly challenging if you don't build your deck around it. Even if you make 5 minions die in one turn, something pretty impressive, you are only getting a 4 mana 6-6 six six with no keywords. At least it balances out Evolve Shaman. Arena Treasure Chest is a 4 mana 0-4 minion with Death Rattle draw 2 cards. It's like playing 2 Loot Hoarders in 1. Except since it can't attack, it can't natively trigger its death rattle. And it's a 4 mana minion with only 4 health. Grave Shambler is a 4 mana 4-4 four four elemental that gains plus 1 plus 1 whenever your weapon is destroyed. Imagine this dream scenario. You have a weapon with 1 durability left. You summon this. You swing your weapon. Boom. 4 mana 5-5. Five five. And it's threatening to become a 6-6 six six in like 2 turns. There are probably worse cards than this, but I just wanted to include it for its bizarre effect. Fell Soul Inquisitor is a 4 mana 1 6 demon with lifesteal and taunt. With lifesteal and taunt, every time your opponent attacks his minion, you can heal 1 health. Taunts with low attack end up being more speed bumps than roadblocks, and this is a big example of that. Now to wrap up the comments, we have the overcosted one keyword squad. Venomancer is a 5 mana 2 5 minion with poisonous. Poisonous is probably a mechanic that could get its own video, but for now I will just say this. Sure, this card can trade into your opponent's 6 health minion, but you know what else could? A minion with 6 attack. Grook Fu Master is a 5 mana 3 5 with wind fury. Sabertooth Stalker is a 6 mana 8 2 with stealth. Grotesque Dragonhawk is a 7 mana 5 5 beast with wind fury and Darkmire Moonkin is a 7 mana 2 8 with spell damage plus 2. These are all keywords you would much rather have on cheaper minions. Cheap Wind Furies can be played before your opponent has an answer and go face. Cheap Stealths can be buffed up before your opponent has enough mana for board clearing spells and then go face. And spell damage is meant to be played in combination with a bunch of cheap damage spells, which is hard to do when the spell damage minion costs 7 mana. Now for the rares, and this was very difficult and I want to mention a card I saw a lot in my reddit thread asking for suggestions. I don't think Colosseum Manager is one of the 5 worst neutral rares in the game. As was pointed out by commenters Free, Gothitel, and Romanoff Blitzer, this is a downside you can control and that you do not have to use your hero power, and in the early game you probably shouldn't be anyway on most classes. With that said, I have a different rare from the Grand Tournament that I'd like to include instead. Argent Watchman is a 2 mana 2 4 minion that can't attack, but can attack if you have used your hero power this turn. With how many 1 mana 1 3s with upside there are running around, a vanilla 2 mana 2 4 is probably okay at this point in the game. This card is so much worse than vanilla. You know how I just said you don't want to be hero powering in the early game? Well in order to get the upside of an early 2 4, you'd have to. In a similar vein, we also have Unpowered Mauler, a 2 mana 2 4 mech that can only attack if you cast a spell this turn. This is actually an even harder condition than Arjun Watchman since you don't always have access to spells like you do your hero power. It does have a mech tag at least, but yeah, two similar stinkers. Next, we have Feral Gibberer, which is a 1 mana 1 1 minion with the effect. After this minion attacks a hero, add a copy of it to your hand. Whew. It's a good thing it's not just your opponent's hero would have completely destroyed my Mayor Noggenfogger handlock deck. I tend to grade bad 1-drops far more harshly since it's much more impressive for a 1-cost card to be bad than a 10-cost one. This card can technically go infinite, but that is pretty hard to do because essentially any card in the game can remove it before it gets to attack a hero. Generous Mummy is a 3-mana 5-4 minion with Reborn and your opponent's cards cost 1 less. You are getting a premium stat line with this card and Reborn gives it some stickiness, but these might honestly be downsides. While cards like Flame Imp or Fel Reaver have seen play as premium stat minions with a downside, at a certain point the downside is too much. With Reborn, you are probably going to give your opponent two turns of discounted cards while you have a slightly overstatted minion. Not a good trade-off. Two-Faced Investor is a 3-mana 2-4 minion with the effect, at the end of your turn, reduce the cost of a card in your hand by one. Sure, the effect of reducing cost is slow, especially in a set that had cards like Ruined Mithril Rod, but wait. Was this text at the bottom? 50% chance to increase? So this can actually harm you instead of helping you on top of it already having a small body. Wow. Terrible. Also want to give an honorable mention to Arena Patron. 
an unbelievably so card that gives almost no payoff. All right, it's about to get epic up in here. Epic up in here. What's weird is that these cards somehow get worse as the rarity increases. First, we have Gorubashi offering a 1 mana 0 2 that destroys itself at the start of your turn to gain 8 armor. It's sort of like a spell that takes a turn to activate, except if you play this any later in the game than exactly turn 1, your opponent can just destroy this and then you get nothing. Nothing! You lose! Blubber Baron is a 3 mana 1 1 that gains plus 1 plus 1 every time you summon a Battlecry minion while it's in your hand. So, you need to be playing a ton of cheap Battlecry minions in order to make this card effective. And then you need to play this card early in the game so that your big Blubber Baron can overwhelm your opponent with its massive body. Oh, and you need to have somehow drawn Blubber Baron as well. A card that is horrible when you draw it later in the game and not that good if you draw it in your opening hand, Blubber Baron is no Blubber Nuggets. What am I supposed to do with all these Blubber Nuggets? Hey, they're chewy! Now you could play good paddle cries with Blubber Baron, or you could play Death Axe Punisher, a 4 mana 3 3 with battle cry, give a random lifesteal minion in your hand, plus 2 plus 2. There are not enough good lifesteal minions in the game to consistently have one in your hand when you play this card, and even if you do, it's a hardly noticeable buff. Death Axe Punisher is no Blubber Duggets. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Desert Obelisk is a 5 mana 0 5 with the effect if you control 3 of these at the end of your turn deal 5 damage to a random enemy. I feel bad putting this meme card on here but it's really really bad. Again 0 attack, woohoo, an incredibly difficult condition to pull off. If you have the technology to clone a 5 mana minion twice, you can just clone a pit fighter and be doing better. Not only is this card hard to pull off because it deals damage to a random enemy, if your opponent has a bunch of tiny minions on board, their hero can get off scot-free, even with the combo. At least it makes for good combo videos. What doesn't is... Validated Doomsayer is a 5 mana 0 7 minion with the effect, at the start of your turn set this minion's attack to 7. A new take on Doomsayer, a great staple card for much of the game's history, this card decides to remix the Doomsayer brand by being completely terrible instead. Zero attack makes this comically easy to remove before it gets its big attack boost, and even then, a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven isn't that good. You are not valid, Doomsayer. Finally, the legendaries. These are tough to pick, but I got a lot of help from Reddit on this one. Nat the Dark Fisher is a 2 mana 2-4 two, with the effect that your opponent has a 50% chance to draw an extra card at the start of their turn. If you love 2-4s with terrible downsides, this is the expansion for you. It's hard to tell if this is worse than Argent Watchman and Unpowered Mauler since it does get to attack, but this can more actively benefit your opponent by just existing. Next is Hemet Nessingwary, a 5 mana 6-3 with battle cry, destroy a beast. Your Silverback Patriarch is no more. Yeah, it has the same amount of health as a 1 drop, and its battle cry is very situational. And sure, Galaka Glutton is much, 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 much better, but you don't get the same thrill as when you use this card. Next is the Boogie Monster, an 8 mana 6 7 with the effect that whenever it attacks and kills a minion it gains plus 2 plus 2. Bad stats for the cost, one of the few minions that gets the distinction of being bad in regular Hearthstone and at Battlegrounds, this card only gets up to an acceptable stat line after killing like 3 minions. And if this somehow did that, you should just win the game on the spot, like Fiora from Legends of Runeterra. Next to last, we have Ozuruk, a 9 mana 5 5 elemental with taunt and battle cry, gain 5 health for each elemental you played last turn. Lining up playing a bunch of elementals has historically been a difficult task, and the designers have since learned that effects like a ton of 8 8s is not even enough. A card that is very often a 5 10 or 5 15, it still dies to a single shadow word death even after all that work. And finally, the card that was constantly suggested, and I agree, is one of the worst cards in the game. Harbinger Celestia is a 4 mana 5 6 minion with stealth, where after your opponent plays a minion, it becomes a copy of that minion. Now imagine this. You play this minion, and then your opponent plays a huge minion. Now you have that huge minion too. Except, that is never going to happen since your opponent can see this card too. Instead what will happen is your opponent will just play a cheap minion, have your 4 drop turn into a 1 mana minion, and then continue about their day. Alright. That's the set. Here are some stats. Here are the other classes which can maybe be more easily seen on my Imgur, Twitter, and Reddit down below. 
thanks so much for watching and let me know if you'd be interested in seeing this type of video for the other classes. Best, Chundo.